Vampires are truly terrifying. Whether they like it or not, they have to hunt to satisfy their thirst. They are often charismatic and will persuade their victims to trust them. Today we are going to look at the scariest vampires in literature. Coming in at number 5 we have Ruthven. Ruthven was the first mention of a vampire in English literature. He first appeared in 1819 in John William Polidori's The Vampire. Since then the character has been used in numerous modern works. The character of Lord Ruthven is based on the real life poet Lord Byron. Others had written about the Lord in a negative light and John used this portrayal as the basis for his character. Lord Ruthven is a vampire but also somewhat of a socialite. He travels the world meeting interesting people and of course drinking the blood of his victims. His actions seem to be cruel in nature. In the vampire he meets a young man named Aubrey. They become friends and begin to travel Europe together. After a disagreement in Rome the two go their separate ways. Aubrey travels to Greece and falls in love with an innkeeper's daughter. The Romance is short lived when Ruthven shows up in town and his lover goes missing. She is found with her blood drained. Everyone in the town suspects it to be the work of a vampire, but Aubrey does not make the connection to Ruthven. The two agree to continue their travels. Not long after, they are attacked by bandits and Ruthven is fatally wounded. As he lays dying, he makes Aubrey swear an oath that he will not mention his death or anything else he knows about Ruthven for a year and a day. Aubrey agrees and Ruthven appears to pass away. Aubrey returns turn to London and is surprised to see Ruthven alive and well. He reminds him of his oath and warns dire consequences should he speak of what he knows. Not long after it's clear Ruthven is attempting to court his sister to torment Aubrey. They plan to marry on the exact day that the oath expires. Aubrey tries everything he can to attempt to warn his sister and save her from this monster. Although vampires have been expanded on and characteristics changed since then, the story has the classic character. He is alluring and uses this to trap his victims. Coming in at number 4 we have Carmilla. Carmilla also known as Macala was one of the first female vampires. The story of Carmilla was published in 1872. In the story she is a female vampire who preys on young women. She finds her female victims, often stalks them for many years of their life before seducing them. In this book she first meets her victim at the age of 6. She visits her in her nursery, laying down beside her and smiling. When the little girl Laura falls asleep Carmilla disappears. Laura convinces herself this was as a childhood dream, but she never forgets about the girl she met in her room when she was young. The story forwards to when Laura is a teenager. A girl in the village suddenly passes away under suspicious circumstances. The town general goes to investigate exactly what happened. While he is away, Laura and her dad come across an overturned stagecoach. A mother and her daughter, who was Carmilla, were in an accident. With her mother being in a hurry to get to her destination, she leaves Carmilla in the care of Laura's father. Laura and Carmilla recognize each other from all those years ago. Although they don't understand it, they begin to form a friendship with one another. Laura begins to have nightmares and soon after she becomes ill. Her health gets worse and the nightmares get more intense. She is taken to the doctor and her father comes up with a plan to help her recover. They go to the old town ruins for a picnic. The town general runs into them as they arrive and tells them of the vampire who is draining the blood of young girls as they sleep. Carmilla arrives at the ruined village when she is instantly recognized by the general. He attacks her but she gets away. She disappears and just like that Laura's dreams come to an end. The townspeople confront Carmilla at her tomb and end her reign of terror over the people of the town. Carmilla is the original prototype for a legion of female vampires. Coming in at number 3 we have Lestat. Lestat de Lioncourt had his first appearance in the 1976 novel Interview with the Vampire. This was the first book that would become the Vampire Chronicles. His full backstory was explored in the Vampire Lestat. He quickly became a fan favourite and numerous books and films have been created around this story. Lestat's personality is that of an aristocrat in the 18th century Paris. He is bold, enthusiastic and defiant. He is an arrogant person who is considered conceited. The way he carries himself you can tell he comes from a privileged upbringing. He is entitled due to the money he has. Even his vampire elders considered him to be the brat prince. Before he became a vampire he was an actor. He loved the attention but this was cut short when he was turned. He created a rock band called the Vampire Lestat with a group of humans in the 1980s. As a human he was illiterate and struggled academically. After becoming a vampire he learned to read in French and English developing a love of literature. He even chose to write books as he pondered philosophical questions like are his actions as a vampire good or bad. He was an in depth and complicated character. He thinks differently to the rest of the coven and they are not approving of his way of thinking. It seems that
that he doesn't agree with his actions, but they are still necessary for his survival. Throughout his time, he turns a lot of mortals into vampires, but sees this as a mercy as it saves them from death. But many see this as a curse. Curse to watch those around you pass on while you live forever, while also having to hunt the innocent. Many of his friends who have been turned into vampires end up turning on him in anger as they are not happy with their new reality. Coming in at number 2 we have Ellie. Not all vampires look how you would expect. You can be changed into a vampire any time in your life. You are then frozen in time to be that age for eternity. For one young vampire Ellie, she was turned at the age of 12. Her first appearance was in the 2004 novel Let the Right One In. Although she will now look this age forever, she is in reality much older than this. Her appearance makes it easy for her to trick people into trusting or helping her. The book focuses around Ellie's friendship with Oscar. Oscar has some morbid interest due to being unhappy in his life. Ellie moves into the house next door and they begin to befriend each other. We discover that Ellie has been a vampire for 200 years. We learn about how she managed to survive undiscovered all this time and her tragic start as a vampire. We learn about her short mortal life. She is a companion who helps her obtain what she needs to survive, but when he is unable to do this anymore, she is forced to start hunting for herself, putting her life and identity in danger. Ellie helps Oscar fight against his bullies and tries to help him gain control of his life. Ellie, although around 200 years old, still has the mind of a child with the powers of a vampire. She struggles with her loneliness due to immortality. She loses control of her actions and of her situation. She causes a lot of suffering to those who come into contact with her. Oscar hopes being her companion can end her reign of terror and give her the friend that she has always needed. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Damon. Fever Dream is a 1982 novel by famous author George R. R. Martin, who wrote Game of Thrones. This vampire novel is set on the antebellum Mississippi River. The story takes place at the start of 1857. The story starts with the steamboat captain, Abner Marsh, who is struggling financially to get his ship ready for sale. He finds a new business partner in a mysterious man named Joshua. He promises to help finance the ship and get ready to sail. Once they set off, Marsh starts to notice a few odd things about Joshua and his friends on board. They only leave their cabin after nightfall. When he is confronted, he says he and his friends are vampire hunters, and they are using the fever dream boat to track some mysterious disappearances along the river. Once he trusts the captain, he reveals the full truth that he has created a potion, one that curses vampires from their need to drink blood. He has been seen by many vampires as a messiah destined to free them from the dependence on hunting humans. He's trying to reach and help as many of his kind as he can to stop any more harm coming to humans. Joshua is not the one to fear in the story, but the evil ancient vampire Damon. He hears about the efforts to cure his people and he doesn't agree that this should be done. He has his followers board the fever dream and overpowers Joshua, taking control of all the vampires on board. The humans manage to escape, leaving the boat to the will of the vampires. Damon was the worst of all the vampires. He wanted to take over the world. He grew his followers at every chance he got. He was obsessed with maintaining and growing his strength and power. He was often cruel towards the humans. His evil and bloodlust made him destroy everyone in his path. Both humans and fellow vampires feared him. Well, there we have it. I'll see you in the next video.